How's it going guys? Brian Danoff here and today I wanted to talk about the Yankees horrible season thus far but why I'm also oddly intrigued and excited that they're struggling so much. Um, now, you know, of course I am still upset as a Yankee fan. It's in my blood. I, I want the this team to win. I want them to win right freaking now. Uh, I want everything to, to improve. I want them to make the playoffs this year. I predicted that they would. I thought they'd be a, a 90 win team. I really did. Uh, I saw last year as, as a huge step forward for the entire organization. And I thought that, uh, you know, you simply look at what they did to the roster. You took away Steven Drew. You added Starling Castro. You lost Justin Wilson, but you added a role as Chapman, who of course hasn't played yet, but you know what I mean? On paper, this team just looked, to me, not stacked, but, but solid. Solidly built, a lot of depth, and, and a lot of talent that would ultimately um, be on par with a lot of the other teams in the American League. So far, I've been very wrong, um, but keep in mind, so have all the experts who thought the Houston Astros would take that next step forward and be a World Series contender this year because they're currently they currently have a worse record than the Yankees and they're in last place in the AL West. And the Philadelphia Phillies are a few games over 500 and look pretty decent. So it's kind of funny how things work like that. But you know, and again, to me, I, I am still of the you know of the crowd that believes that it, it is still early. This season is is just about a month old. They've played 24 games, 24 of 162. There is a lot of baseball left, and there is a lot of time for them to improve. And I do think they'll ultimately play better. I don't know how much better, but they will not be... They, they're not on pace. They won't be, lose 100 games. They won't lose 90 games. I think they can make it to 500 uh, at this point. Um, and again, it is early. I could see them, they, they could get, if they go on a hot streak and win, you know, 14 or 15 of their next 19, they're back in the position I thought they'd be. They'd be over 500. They'd be up in the standings. All could be right and well again in Yankee land. Um, of course, it, that's hard to see right now, and understandably so. Um, now, again, as I said, last year, in my opinion, was a huge step forward for the Yankee franchise, not just for their major league team, for their entire organization, top to bottom. They developed uh, a lot of their top prospects They continued to develop and improve, and, and guys like Luis Severino, like Greg Bird, came up, had a huge impact immediately. Um, they're, they're, uh, they drafted James Caprillion, who, you know, uh, Everyone considers to be a major league talent already, even in his, his se only his second professional season in the minor leagues. He is hurt right now. That's besides the point. Um, they, of course, the offseason before this, they acquired Didi Gregorius, Nathan Evaldi. Um, and, you know, they, 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 they do have their shortstop for the next few years. Gregorius had an incredible 2015 once he got past, you know, his struggles early on. He's struggling now as well, but my perspective was that the Yankees were were truly trending in the up in, in, in the right direction. They were getting younger, they were trusting their prospects more, and they were holding off on spending money. And sure enough, they did this offseason. They didn't spend a dime on free agency, and and I thought that was a, a a respectable move. People were very upset about it. I thought it was okay because the bottom line is this team is not. No matter what they say, they're not looking to win the World Series this year. They're not looking to win it next year. But they do see a prime opportunity and a huge window for success in, you know, towards the end of this decade. To, you know, we're, it's 2016, we're almost done with the 2010s. Um, 2018, 2019, 2020. Say what you want about how maybe you don't just agree with this strategy, but the Yankees seem to be building towards becoming that championship caliber team in a few seasons. Um, they're, they're going to have a ton of money coming off the books already, regardless. This year, Beltran's contract will be shed. Teixeira's contract will be shed. Don't know if he'll come back. Either way, he won't be making $20 million a year with the Yankees next year. Um, 
CC's will be off next year. A-Rod's will be off next year. Tanaka has an opt-out after next season. We'll see if that happens. Um, so the Yankees are, are uh, uh, you know, and again, there, there comes this argument. Y you, can't, you can't put all your, your, your chips, I don't know what the phrase is, all, the, all your chips on the table. You can't just go all in, you know, like, like the, the, the Knicks did for LeBron James five, six years ago in Bryce Harper. The Yankees can't wait around and do nothing because they expect to sign a guy like Bryce Harper. That, that is not a good idea. But that, it doesn't have to be him. There are tons of free agents. Tons of guys will hit the open market. And not only that, they have their best farm system since that 90s era when they started that dynasty. And this isn't about replicating the dynasty. It's just about becoming a, a solid team again, top to bottom. And the Yankees are doing that. They're taking the steps to do that. Um, so this is where having a horrible season this year comes into play. The Yankees, of course, um, as I said, they're playing horribly. And there is that, apparent, you know, right now it's a very real possibility that they don't improve that much. And they will finish under 500 and they will finish, you know, far out of playoff, playoff contention. And that is where I get very excited. And that is because I do believe that if the Yankees come towards the trade deadline and they are still in this unfavorable position, a playoff run is very unlikely, people are hurt, people are underperforming, the way things are now, I think the Yankees would look to trade a lot of their major league, uh, you know, pieces. And again, that would be, in my opinion, the best possible thing for the Yankees in terms of their actual chances to win championships in in the seasons down the road. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. There's, a, there, you know, there's there, there there would be so much interest in guys like Andrew Miller, Aroldis Chapman, Teixeira, Beltron, Gardner. Um, and that's that that's kind of the you know that's kind of it. But if the Yankees look to trade all of them, or even some of them, teams will cough up those solid prospects. Maybe not a blue chip top 100 prospect, but someone who is truly on the cusp of being major league ready and has a lot of potential. You, you see what, 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 how desperate teams get at the trade deadline. If they see that there is a window for them to win this year, they will go for it. And I don't, you know, the way Beltron swung the bat overall this season, he still looks decent. If, 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 he's, if he's hitting respectively at the trade deadline, teams are going to have interest. We know his prolific postseason uh, career. He's a great hitter in October. Teams will want that. They'll want his veteran presence. He can DH. Um, teams would give the... I mean, uh, the Mets... I mean, Beltron was much younger, but the Mets turned what was a really struggling, injury-prone Beltron into Zach Wheeler. Not trying to compare, not trying to say that the Yankees would get a guy like that, but they could if they entertained trading him. Um, don't even have to talk much about Miller and Chapman. These guys are two of the best relievers in baseball. Teams are going to give up a lot for them, and they would. And I think, you know, Chapman, is, his suspension will be up in a few days. So he'll be back. He probably will dominate. He'll probably throw 105 miles an hour and be incredible. And teams will want that because the suspension, that whole domestic violence thing, is in the past. And they don't have to worry about that going forward. So teams would have a lot of interest in Chapman. They'd have a lot of interest in Miller. Gardner has a very favorable team contract still. Um, still, got, He's having a, a good season so far. He's having a, a decent season. And, and he gets on base. He plays great defense. He has, he has a lot of speed. And he hits for contact. Um, and he, of course, he, he can hit the occasional home run. He, he's kind of, he's not the total package, and he has his share of slumps, but the Yankees were looking to trade him last winter, and they should be looking to trade him again in the summer. Um, and again, Teixeira, don't need a, I mean, it's obvious. Power hitting first baseman, great defense. Uh, a team that immediately pops into my head is the Chicago White Sox, as they lost, you know, Adam LaRoche, and they have Jose Abreu, but, you know, they need to protect his bat. He probably is better suited playing DH. So, uh, I think if the Yankees want to be smart about this... Now, again, if the team improves and they play and they play better and they still have a chance to make a postseason run, they're the Yankees, they're going to go for it, and I understand it. Um, 
what I would not understand is them not selling at the deadline if they are still playing poorly. And I think it's a great opportunity for the Yankees to, again, shed some more payroll. And, and not only, you know, you, you won't just get a draft pick for Teixeira that won't even affect the team for another four or five years. You could get a prospect or a major league player in return that is younger, cost-controlled, and has a lot of has a lot more to offer the Yankees in the next few years rather than acquiring a prospect, you know, rather than picking a prospect with the draft pick the Yankees would gain whose MLB ETA would be like 2022. The Yankees aren't, you know, they're not looking too far down the road. They want to win 2018-2019. That's not too far off. And look, and they, they won't say that publicly, but that's the case. That's the case. You look at what they've been doing. They're not spending money. Uh, they're drafting, they're focusing on their prospects, they're giving their prospects a huge chance to come up and make a difference and, and really develop. I, I like what they're doing. I do. So that's why them them losing this year, them selling pieces of the deadline, I would I would be so happy with that. I really would. If, you, if you're a Yankee fan that wants to see this team become, once again, a stable perennial contender, they can do that. If they stay the course, and and this season, if if they if it went if it went totally south, that helped them even more. And you know, and again, the Bryce Harper thing, I personally do see him and hope that he becomes a Yankee. But if not, other guys who are hitting the free agent market around that time will be Matt Harvey, Manny Machado, a lot of other guys. I didn't look up, so sorry. But you can look up that, that free agent list. You look up what Bryce Harper's be, going to become a free agent. It's not just him. There is so much talent hitting the market then. And some will sign extensions. Some won't. So that, that's pretty much it, guys. That's my view. Uh, the Yankees, it sucks to see them play like this. It does. But it, it really might be the best thing for the future. And if you want the Yankees to win their 28th World Series championship as soon as possible... Losing this year is probably the best way to go about uh, succeeding with that, with winning, you know, number 28. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and one more point. Um, for everyone who says if George Steinbrenner was alive, things would be better, you're wrong. You are. Um, this could be a separate rant on its own, but the bottom line is George Steinbrenner had so little to do with what the Yankees have become since uh, the early 90s. He was suspended in 1992. And at that point, the Yankees were run by Gene Michael. He drafted. They had developed all these guys. Steinbrenner came back with this 90, with, with what was, you know, the 95, 96 World Championship teams. They didn't win in 95, but... Steinbrenner had so little to do with the last 20 years of his, of his ownership, um, and people really forget that a lot, and it's, it's frustrating. And, and, and when he was making a difference and firing people and going crazy, the Yankees won absolutely nothing. That was the 1980s. That is when he was firing Billy Martin every other day, firing every other manager, and, and making these horrible moves, signing these horrible contracts. George Steinbrenner is still probably the best owner in sports history, but... You know, to say that if he were alive, things would be better, and if he was running the team, things would be better, I don't think so. Because he would have traded Aaron Judge two off-seasons ago. He would have signed Josh Hamilton three, four years ago. He would have signed Zach Greinke this off-season to a 10-year, $300 million contract. So, just, just think about that. Really think about that. George Steinbrenner did a lot to help the Yankees, but in terms of developing prospects and, and really, you know, uh, what the Yankees have become since... You know, 95, 96, he had very little to do with that on the field. So, I'll leave it at that. Uh, anyway, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Go Yankees. Let me know what you think. Um, it's hard. If you're a Yankee fan who hates watching this team lose, I get it. But if, they, if you can swallow this season, I think there's so much to look forward to in the future. More than there has been. More than there has been, you know, uh, to be excited about in, in 20 years. It, this is like the 92-93 Yankees, I, I think. I'm not saying they're going to win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships. But I think they have a championship contender on the horizon. And I, I, I can see it. I see it with these prospects. I see it with all the money they'll have to spend soon. 
it's 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 exciting. It really is. And I think Yankee fans should really keep that in mind while they watch this team struggle. So I know it's rough, but hang in there. Better times are coming, guys. Um, and you know, worst comes to worst, it's night. It's 2016. It is the 20th anniversary of 1996. You guys can just keep watching Yankee classics, Yankeeographies, and live in the past for a little bit. That's what Yankee fans are good at. So thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.